welcome. In this tutorial we are going to see how to import stereo WAV files into New Super Mario Bros. DS. This is an update for the last tutorial which I wasn't really satisfied with and some people wanted the update so let's get into it. First you will open an SMB editor and select the ROM. Proceed to extract the sound data. Like this, you can just drag it. Open Nitro Studio. Open the newly extracted SDAT. Expand Sound Sequence. Then toggle the placeholder of the slot you want the song to be in. In this case I will place it on slot 35 so let's just toggle it. Perfect. Let's go down into files and add my, my templates. I will leave this in the description. This tutorial will be only about stereo, so we will only be importing the stereo stuff. So let's proceed to import the template, SSQ. It should also create this. We will remove this because we already have it here. Now let's import the bank. Stereo template bank. Okay. And now let's import the wave archive. Here we have it. Now we should have everything here. Yes, we do. So now we will expand sound sequence once again and rename 35 to what we want BGM. In this case, I will use the new Super Mario Brothers U music, so SMBU title, or oh, I'll just use the actual name. Here it is. Now we select here the actual sequence, which is the unknown 52, which is the one we added. And here we select the bank, which should be the last one. New file in this case. Then we set volume to 127, channel priority 64, player priority 50. Now we go down, expand instrument bank, and rename the bank we added. Bank. GM title The name doesn't really matter but it's always nice to have a nice naming Here I'll name this MBU title. Okay, now we have here a blank SSQ. It should play really awful. Yep, and it does. 
we hit save. Oh, right. We also need to configure the bank waves. So, wave 1 is null, wave 2 null, 3 is also null. And wave 0 will be our wave and SMBU title, the one we added. save just to make sure in case it crashes because Nitro Studio likes to crash sometimes and okay now that we have all of the sequences let's get um, the music file ready so we have here our music we want to use let's open our audacity Okay, then we give then we just play it. Next we will have to find the loop point of the song. In this case, as I'm using uh, an SMU music, I I know exactly where the loop is, but if you are using any sound or any other thing, you will have to find the loop point yourself just by hearing and like cropping the part you want, but in this case I know the fixed loop point which is right here, so I will select here samples then in case my sample location is 181146 and it ends here so this is my loop point, it should look perfect <laughs> did. Now I cut this, select the blank part just by clicking and paste. Now I hit file, export, export multiple and I will export into my tutorial folder into, I will actually select so it's easier for your, you guys to see. Temp. So I go here in my tutorial folder, then I add a folder, for example, NSM. I select it and export. Clean this, okay, clean this. Now I should have both stereo sequences here with me. Now I close both this and open the first one. Which is the intro. We then select the the speed. For example, your WAV can have a max of 60 minutes. If it's bigger than that, it won't play. Uh, and it's like both of them, in this case my merge ones are just... Yeah, just 48 seconds. I mean, I think the max is actually around this, so I would say don't go bigger than one minute or else it might not play and if you are going stereo you have to go with the lowest settings here because of memory it should play quite awful and this is how it would sound on mono But it's a little sacrifice we have to do if we want stereo. So we select this project text. I I mean bitrate. 
then we separate the two. We now go here. Oh wait, never mind. Yeah, now we have to export both of these. Let's say intro subfolder. We should now have it here. We select the first one. And we separate stereo to mono and delete the extra one. And we replace this one, the one we loaded with the one we created. We do the same for the other one. Separate stereo to mono, delete top one in this case, and replace it. Okay, now we have the intro uh, with the stereo and the um, mono separated. So now let's move on to the loop. As again, we change the project bitrate to 800. We separate a stereo track, a file, export, export multiple. Also, make sure it's always on WAV. Yeah, I forgot to say this, but it needs to always be on WAV, or else it won't work. Intro, we change this to loop. Clear this. We should now again have these two tracks. Load the first one. Separate stereo to mono, export WAV, and replace the one we loaded. Do the same for the other one. Export WAV and replace the one we loaded. Yeah. Okay. So now we should have everything separated and ready to to import. So let's get on making the um, the MIDI file. Let open Anvil Studio, and here we'll open Song. We go into the te into our templates. Oh no, it crashed. Open song and we will select the stereo bank. Uh, not the stereo bank, the, the stereo MIDI that I included in the template. It should have all the instruments and channels already set up. So the only thing you will have to do is first select the first track and view the piano roll editor. Then just place one note, drag it like this, right click it, then properties, and change this to 64. Okay, it's now on position 64, and we will now get this, the exact size for that so let's open intro and let's open only the the left channel because we only need to know the length of the track 
hit Control A to select everything. And we should have here the end of the selection, which is 5661. So to get the exact size, we apply this formula here, which in our case, this is the seconds and milliseconds, like milliseconds, seconds. And this is um, just a, a factor that I did with some divisions. So five, six, six, one. 5661. Now we round this so it keeps 545. Five. Properties and change the ticks to 545 five ticks. Okay, now here we have it our intro. Do the same on R. Yep, on 64. Make sure to drag this here. And just paste this here. Okay, perfect. We now should have both of the same length. Also make sure when you add the notes they are on volume 100. They need to be on max. If you already added the notes without it being on 100, you can just change it here. Now let's add the loops. For the loops, we have to add again the intro. We add the intro again. Now here, right at the start, we add a new note. Try to make it as close as possible. Yeah, mine's already the most close it could be. And let's get the size for this one. So wait. Yeah, you guys won't have this issue. It's because I haven't really updated my my template yet. Sorry. So now we get the size of the loop four three zero nineteen. Okay, so here we place uh four three zero nineteen. Now we round this number down because like it might lose a few milliseconds of the track, but it's worth it because else there might be a gap and we don't want those gaps. So we round it down. And here we have it. Now to make this easier, we can simply delete loop R. We can just delete it. Clone. L and change it to loop R, change the LR balance to max and the instrument to onky tonk. And right now we have loop R also with the line. So it should be everything set up. Let's now to convert it to I so let's now add the loop points you, we go we select the first track view event list now we go to the bottom edit insert midi event include check include all controller events and meta events the kind of event is a marker and it is loop start. Be sure that it's with the same casing because it is case sensitive. So it needs to be exactly loop start starting with a lower L. 
now we select loop L, select the bottom, edit, insert MIDI event, same settings, but this time loop N. And here we have our loops defined. We proceed to export a MIDI format file zero, which will be our music, and I will make I will name it my SSCQ. We can close this now. And let's start setting up also the waves. We can now go into the wave archive, open our waves, and start replacing with our ones which in this case will be this one then this one basically this is intro L, intro R, uh, loop L, loop R so port this to place and we give it a test <laughs> Okay. Okay, and everything seems to be fine. We hit save, and now we will import here. Where is it? Okay, it's here. We replace the file with my SSQ. Oh, I click replace. Oh, right. You must start Nitro Studio with with administrator permissions, unless you have a portable installation. If you have a portable installation, you don't need to run it as admin. Okay. Now we replace this file with my SCQ. We save it because playback can crash Nitro Studio and we hit play. Let's test it. Okay, and it's time to test it in the game. In this case, I will simply replace the, the menu one. Let's change the menu one to the to the title and the bank two. So okay. So now the menu should play song thirty five. We go into our ROM and replace the, S, the sound data with our new sound data. Open our open the emulator. And here we have it. Now let's see if there is actually enough heap of memory to run it on on the actual level because sometimes there is not enough memory. So let's select song 35, 
Also, I'm using a custom version of an SMB editor that allows me to select all of the slots. I will link the download in the description. And yes, we actually have enough heap to run it. So, you might notice that there are... that some sounds are missing. What you can always do is lower the bit rate even more, but that might make the sound very unpleasant to hear. Unfortunately, this is the DS limitation, there is not much that can be done. If you go with more, then it might play, but you might also have to lower the bit rate. Okay, so this was the video. Hope you liked it. All links will be left in the description and thank you for watching.